In this lesson, we're going to talk about suspense and streaming. Let's start from suspense. Now, if we head to React documentation, suspense is a React component that you can use, which allows you to display a fallback UI or a fallback until its children have finished loading. So typically the children is an async function or it's doing or performing an asynchronous task. That's why it's taking up time to load. And while it's loading, the suspense boundary or your suspense component is going to show a fallback. This is typically your loading UI it can be a skeleton. It can be a spinner while this component is finished loading. And once this is completed or the asynchronous task is completed, the suspense is going to actually uh, swap the loading UI or the fallback with the actual result of your component. Now, Next.js 13 supports suspense and allows you to add loading UI to your route segments very easy. So let's jump into the code and see this in action. Now, building on top of the project that we've been working on in the previous lessons, where we added this about page for different route groups and we had uh, some blog posts added, a list of all of our blog posts and also individual blog posts here. Let's see how we can add uh, loading UI using this suspense boundary that's a feature in React 18 to our project. So let's uh, start by our posts. Now we can have different loading UIs or components for each of your route segments. And you would create that loading UI by adding a loading.jsx to that specific segment. So right now I have added this loading.jsx to my posts segment. So everything inside of my posts, it's now going to add this loading.jsx. I'm going to tell you how this works behind the scene, but for now let's just add a loading skeleton to this. And all I'm going to say over here is a section with some paddings and then a container. And inside of it, let's just add an H2 that says loading. Okay, let me just reload the page. And if I now visit this blog page, you can see that loading text showed up for a second before the actual content of our uh, posts page showed up. Now inside of our all posts page, where we are using this get all posts function to fetch all of our posts and then show a list down here. Uh, I wanna actually delay this uh, rendering for some time so that we can see this loading better. So I'm going to export an async function called wait. I'm going to get some milliseconds and all I'm going to do is return a new promise uh, that takes a resolve function and then this is going to call the set timeout function and it's going to call this resolve in that many number of milliseconds. This is just going to allow me to delay uh, the response of an asynchronous task for whatever number of milliseconds that I passed to it. So let's just go to the get all posts function that we have up top and let's actually await this wait function and I'm going to pass in 2000 milliseconds or two seconds. So now let me just go back to the home page and refresh my application because remember anytime that your page is using a react server component the result of rendering that react server component is now saved in a client side cache that's why i want to reload so that i'm not using a cache because with the cache it's going to be instant i'm going to actually go ahead and uh, refetch that data again from the server side to for this function to be called and for this delay to happen now if i go to the blog you can see that loading uh, spinner or loading skeleton or whatever loading UI that you want to put in this file uh, before I can actually see the content of my page. Now just like that you can add loading UI to your route segments so anything inside of our posts segment is now going to be wrapped inside of a suspense boundary which allows us to render or show this loading skeleton or loading UI before the content of our segment or page is ready and then it's going to automatically swap the two together. Now inside of our posts page we have this dynamic slug segment that's responsible for rendering individual slugs and now because this is also inside of our posts segment it is going to also be wrapped with this loading UI or with the suspense boundary so these components are going to actually use that loading as well. Now to demonstrate this, let's actually go back to our posts 
and actually add the weight function to this get post spice log function as well so this is going to take a bit longer as well so we can see this in action now let me just go back to my individual blog posts i'm going to comment this generate static params function out because this is going to instruct Next.js to statically generate these pages at build time. If you're running a local development server here, but if you have the generate static params, you won't see this loading UI the way that you should because there you would have a static HTML files coming in. There's no asynchronous task of fetching data happening. So I need to comment this out before we can actually see this in action. Let me save this file and go back to the homepage. Let me actually also refresh so that I get rid of the cache. So if I go to the all blog posts page now, I can see the loading UI before the content or the list of our, my blog posts show up. And then once I click on one of these blog posts, I can actually again see that loading uh, skeleton or the loading UI because my individual blog posts or this dynamic segment is still nested inside of this post segment. And I do have this loading file uh, that wraps the content of this for slash posts in a uh, suspense boundary. So anything inside of it, all the children and nested layouts inside of it are going to also be uh, wrapped this suspense component or actually use this specific loading UI. Now, in addition to the loading.jsx or this specific file you can add to your route segment, you can also wrap any other component that you have, which is performing an asynchronous task with suspense component and create your own suspense boundaries. Let me just close all of this and go to our forward slash slug page. This is the individual blog posts. And let's imagine that we want to fetch the view count for each of these blog posts, similar to what you can see on blog posts or notes on my site. So how do we do this? Let's actually create a component here inside of our components folder. Let's call them maybe page views.jsx. I'm going to export a page view component here and let's imagine that we want to fetch uh, page view counts from our db or however you're storing this we're going to uh, simulate this by again using that uh, the wait function that we created inside of our lib now again this is going to be you fetching your view counts from a database from your cms or however you decide to store it uh, nonetheless, we just are simulating this with the use of this wait function. Now, to be able to use a wait inside of this React server component, we need to turn it to async. So now we're just simulating that we're fetching some page view counts from our DB. Let's say we're storing different slugs and different view counts inside of our database or CMS or however or from wherever you're fetching it locally or from a database. We are performing an asynchronous task. So this uh, page views component is an asynchronous component or is performing an asynchronous task. And we want to wrap it with a suspense to actually see that we can use suspense boundaries for our own component UIs as well. Okay, so let's just save this. And let's say this is going to return to us, uh, maybe say views, and then it's going to return 100. For now, it's just going to just say that statically. Now, if I go back to my page, I can maybe come down here and add this page views component we created here. It, uh, and realistically, you would have to pass in your slug over here, right? Uh, and get this slug. We have this slug from this page. So you get this slug. And then inside of your page views, you're going to expect an slug. And then maybe here you would have a function that says views, maybe equal evading getting a function you can just create these functions get maybe page view and then you would pass in that slug over here to just get that view and then render that view down here if we don't have this we're just going to simulate uh, such a behavior with this wait function that we created here so let's save that going back to this now if i save this as well uh, we should be able to see that views down here if i refresh the page as you can see i have this views we just give this a little margin bottom as well so we have them clear from each other so as you can see we have this views down here rendering here now we know that this is an asynchronous function first of all because it's a react server component but more than that it's also performing an asynchronous task inside of it for fetching our view count now what we can do here is we can use react suspense 
So let's go suspense. This is coming from React. As you can see, this is imported from React up top. And all I can do here is wrap this component with this suspense boundary. And then I'm going to pass a fallback UI to this. Let's say I want to say maybe a div that says loading uh, view count. And then I'm going to just wrap this. So let me just close this so that you can see. So all I did over here is that I'm wrapping this asynchronous component with the suspense component. I'm passing in a fallback and the fallback is just a div that says loading view count. If I refresh this page, we may be able to see it. So we see this first loading and then see loading view count. So first of all, that outermost loading UI, which belonged to the posts segment, uh, was rendered to save your loading that specific blog post. And then once that actually rendered, this component kicked in. This is also using suspense and inside of it, we are fetching some data. So we were able to wrap it with our own suspense component to show a fallback UI, to show a loading UI while that task is completed. And once it is, it's actually going to swap the loading UI with the actual uh, content of our component. One last thing I want to mention before moving on to streaming is that we can also add loading UI to our route groups. So if I go to our about page, you can see we created this route group, which rendered a side navigation for our nested pages with the use of this layout. Now to create route groups, we just have to wrap the name of our folder with parentheses. This is not going to affect our route segment or path. As you can see here, the about page is still accessed at forward slash about. So the name of this route group doesn't really matter because it does not affect the segment. Nonetheless, we can also use suspense to add loading UI to our route groups by just adding a loading.jsx file to this route group segment. So here, let me just export a loading that just returns loading. Now, if I go to my about page and pretend something time consuming is happening here, so I'm going to evade that same wait function that we have created and I'm going to wait maybe for three seconds here. I'm going to turn this page into an async component. So now if I go back and if I refresh my page, what's happening is that inside of this about page, we are doing an asynchronous task. This about page is inside of our route group and this route group is actually sharing this layout and this loading UI. So if I now go to about page, you can see this loading uh, skeleton or text is showing before the about page is rendered. Now all the other pages are going to also share this loading UI as well as that layout as we learned in the previous lesson. But for the team and contact, because we're not fetching really anything, we're just rendering this div, it's near instant, but we were able to kind of simulate a more time consuming task happening on the about page. Now, typically these type of pages are static, your company pages, team and stuff and whatnot are static, but you can imagine the same uh, route segment or a route group uh, for something that's actually really fetching data. Now these can be different categories for your product. So you're fetching different categories, you're fetching different products belonging to categories, and you're just grouping them all in one route group. You can add a loading UI, that's going to kick in anytime you're transitioning between different routes. So that was suspense and loading UI in Next.js 13 inside the app router. We can easily add loading UI to our segments by adding a loading.js or JSX or TS and TSX if you're using TypeScript to each segment. And then that segment is going to use that loading skeleton for all the nested children pages and layouts inside of it. You can render any loading UI that you want, a spinner, a loading skeleton, just a text for while the components finish loading. And once they do, it's going to swap them with the actual content of your components. We also learned that behind the scene, Next.js is actually just wrapping our page components or that segment with a suspense boundary. And let me just show you this diagram from the documentation. So when you add a loading.js file to your segment, for a loading UI, what's happening behind the scene is that Next.js is going to wrap your page component inside of this suspense and then it's going to pass whatever you're returning from your loading.js file as the fallback to this suspense component. So this is happening automatically behind the scene so you don't have to worry about wrapping your page components or layouts with the suspense. 
you just need to create a loading.js file, return whatever loading UI you want from it. Next.js is going to automatically pass that as the fallback to a suspense component that wraps your whole page inside of your layout. Now let's also talk about streaming. Now to understand what streaming is, let's talk about server-side rendering for a second. Now anytime that you are requesting a page that's a React server component, a request is going to the server and the server is going to fetch the necessary data for that page. It's going to then generate the HTML, send the HTML, CSS and JavaScript to the client side, on the client side in the browser. Uh, Next.js is going to first render a non-interactive version of your site. It's going to be the HTML and CSS non-interactive. So for, for the user to actually see something, and then once the component JavaScript files or React is actually downloaded, React is going to kick in and make that component or page interactive. So this is the sequence of a request going to the server, the HTML being generated and your page becoming interactive. Now all of these sequences and steps are blocking and they're time consuming. So you won't be able to show anything on the client side in the browser until the data is finished loading on the server and the server has generated the HTML. Also, React cannot hydrate or cannot make your page interactive unless all the components or until all the components are downloaded on the client side. Now with the streaming, it allows you to send this HTML as it is generated on the server uh, in chunks. So it streams the response instead of waiting for the whole thing to be ready and send it to the client side. It streams the response in so you can show that UI on the page as they become available. And then also React is going to selectively start hydrating this chunks that come in from the server so your page will show up faster this is a perceived uh, boost in the performance because the user can actually see components coming into the page but it's actually beyond the perceived performance it's actually a better performance because now if you're not waiting for the whole data fetching to be finished to get some html if you're going to stream the html as they become available uh, now imagine that you have a list of content with layouts and sidebar navigations and stuff. So you're going to see the static parts of this component that doesn't require any data fetching first. So the layout is going to be there. On top of uh, that layouts are not going to be re-rendered if the page is, uh, has been visited before. The layout is going to render once and then the result is going to be cached on the client side. But for the segments that are changing, in this case, we're waiting for the data fetching but with a streaming, imagine a list of maybe our blog posts or you know different segments and sections inside of your page that are going to be just streamed in and shown on the page and then hydrated with React as they come in, as opposed to waiting for the whole thing to be finished, rendered on the page and then hydrated with React. Now, I haven't found a good way to actually show this in the code to actually see these different components show up on the page. But if you look at the diagram that's inside of the Next.js documentation, uh, instead of waiting for the whole page to be plugged in, so you're dealing with a blank page and then the whole page is going to come from the server with the streaming. First of all, you have those layouts around uh, and then the result of a streaming response is going to be showing up gradually or uh, as they're being streamed in and streaming actually works with react component models because each component can be considered a chunk so these components can be streamed in separately or as they become available and then further down here it actually explains that uh, react also prioritizes the components that are going to be more important based on the user interaction and the components that don't have any data fetching they will come in first all in all, it's going to boost your performance because you're not waiting for that long request or the data fetching that's happening on the server to actually show something to the client. So instead of a blank page, you're showing UI, you're showing maybe your layouts, and you're also showing this uh, response streamed from the server as it becomes available. And it's also interactive because now React is selectively or partially hydrating different components inside your app. Uh, as opposed to waiting for the whole page to finish and then hydrate the whole page. So that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to talk about error handling and error boundaries inside the app router. So see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.